I'm going to be showing you how to build a graphical user interface for our Arduino project by using Qt along with Q serial port. We'll be controlling the position of a servo motor along with the speed of a DC motor. Let's start. This video, which was uploaded quite a while back, goes into the details of how Q serial port exactly works. And my video will use the same concepts. However, my project is different. If you want to learn the exact mechanism of QSerial port and how it connects to your Arduino and stuff, then I recommend you watch this video here. It'll be linked in the description below. I will show you quickly how to get QSerial port up and running. So I won't be going into the exact intricate details, but I will still show you step by step how to set up your GUI. So let's start. Firstly, check if you have the QSerial port by going into the maintenance tool. For me, I'm using Qt 6.4. So I have to go in my additional libraries and then install it from there. If you don't have it, you will not be able to do this GUI project. So make sure you have QSerial port installed. You can install it by selecting it there. I've already done it before, so I don't need to do it again. So based on your Qt version, you will see this menu tab and then you can install it. If you have Qt 5 or 6, you should have this one. So yeah, make sure you select it and install it and then you can continue with this project. So the Q serial port lets you send data from the GUI to the Arduino board itself. So moving on, we can then begin our script. So make a new Arduino file and then let's set up the servo motor first. So make a servo object, set my serial speed. 9600 is pretty good default for most cases. I'm using pin number nine, so I'm gonna attach it to pin nine. If the serial is available, read the input and then set the angle, right? Because it'll be an integer value. I can also print it to the screen for debugging. So yeah, that's it. For the DC motor, let's set up a similar method, servo object, and then serial speed. I'm going to attach it to pin number eight, write a zero angle to it, zero speed, and then you can say while it is available, get the velocity and then write it to that. Make a new Qt project like this on Qt Creator. Save it in the same folder where you have the Arduino script. I'm going to use QMake and then use the Qt dialog. Since it's only a single page GUI, and yeah, Qt 6.4.2. The first thing you do is include serial port and run your file. Make sure that this is able to work because if this works, then you have correctly installed serial port and you can proceed. But if you get any error here, it means that you have not installed serial port properly or you're missing it. So if that's working, then that's good. Let's set up the GUI. Use buttons for 0 degrees, 45 and 90 degrees along with the slider bar. You can set the label name to anything you want. And so in the UI, they can be identified. Let's also set up the servo label. Just changing my size here. And then the value itself, which will update in real time. So yeah, you can change it to any font you want, you know, just make it look, look nice. And then my slider will adjust the servo by angle and then I'll set the value to 0 to 180 right because it's from 0 degrees to 180 degrees and then let's also add slots by right clicking go to slot clicked for the buttons and then for my slider right click slot and then value change because it'll update when the value is changed so these are all our methods which we need to fill in. Go in the header file and include everything we need. So Q serial port, Q serial port info, Q debug, and then Q widgets. Now the video which I have linked in the description below contains the explanation of all this in detail. So I won't explain it here because it's covered very well there. I'm just gonna show you how to quickly get this up and running. So define your objects there. So for me, my Arduino corresponds to vendor ID 9025 and product ID 67. 
I'll show you quickly how to obtain this for your own Arduino. It won't be the same. For me, I have an Arduino Uno, so that this corresponds to that one. Also define a boolean and a string. So yeah, these are the variables which you will use for the GUI interaction with the Arduino itself. So now we are back in the CPP file and we can finish our code. So let's first set up our serial port. So yeah, define a new serial port and then set the availability to false and then empty port name. Now this one will let you view the ports on your system. So this will help you identify which port corresponds to your Arduino. And this was also covered in that video. So I'm just using the exact same code as that person did. And I'm just going to find out which port corresponds to mine. If you want to know more, you can also look at the Qt documentation, which explains this in detail. So here I'm printing out my vendor ID because I want to know where it is. You may have to do this for your Arduino if you don't know what your vendor and product ID are. So uncomment the line and then run this one. You will see it print out there. So yeah, that's our GUI. Like obviously it's not responding now because we haven't done anything, but you can see that it prints the values. Set the min and max to 180 of the slider and then uncomment the line out. So check which port the Arduino corresponds to. So you have to always do this because let's, let's say you plug it into a different USB, then you will not be able to identify it. So it's good to always loop through the ports and then match the one which corresponds to your Arduino instead of just setting it to a specific one every time. It just fails safe. So you just match it up to your Arduino product ID and then you just set the port name and then set the availability, change the Boolean value to true. So that's good. And then I can say QDebug print out to my screen port available. So now we know. If you run this, you will get an error because I didn't comment out the void update servo function. So do that here in the header file and then we'll run it one more time. So yeah, we have the port showing, so that's good. Okay, now we can set up the port. So if it is available, then I'm going to use the default settings for the Q serial port. The documentation again explains this in detail. I won't waste too much of time explaining each line now, but basically I'm matching my serial rate 9600 as in the Arduino file, data 8 as my data bits. You should be able to get it to work with the exact same settings here because these are the default ones. Else, I will put an error message warning saying that okay, port is error and not available. So if I close my project, I want the port to close as well. So I'm just going to close it here and then also print out to my screen closing port, as you can see there. So now let's change the value of the UI, make it interactive. So the first thing I want to do is if I click the button, I want the slider to be zero. So I'm going to do that here. And then, yeah, so the value which I'm passing to my Arduino will be a string. Okay. It's not an integer. It's a string because in the Arduino, Script it'll make it into an integer by using parseInt. So yeah, make sure it's a string as I'm doing here. So I'm changing the value to the string and then assigning that. So now you see that the GUI is interactive. If I move along the slider, it'll show you the value changing. So yeah, we have a good GUI now. It's pretty simple, but it does the job. And now we can proceed with completing our program. So the last thing we need to define is the update servo class method. So here you just have to say, if the Arduino is writable, I can say, okay, command, print out the value just for debugging and then write it there as a character. Else, I'll just say, okay, could not write to serial. And this can happen sometimes. And then also call that method in my button clicked methods. So it has to be able to connect, right? So now if I run this one, I will see that 
initially I don't have any value, right? It's zero. It's passing in zero. So let's see what, what happens here. For 45, I'm doing it 45. And you see how the servo moves along. So you see how it's changing the angle there. I set it to 90 and then zero. It goes back to zero because when the serial is not available, it'll pass in zero. So it resets the angle to zero degrees. I'm making it 180 here so it spins around and it spins back. If it's not responding, then just check your connections. It should work here because the port is available as you can see there. So now when I click the buttons in my GUI, it does respond, so that's good. And you see how now it's not going back to zero, it's staying at the, the angle. So that's good, right? That's what we want. Because when you pass it in from the GUI, it holds the value as 45, it won't go back to zero. 45, and it's staying there. It's not making the angle back to zero. It's staying constant. So now I'm using the slider bar. Okay, now here, make sure you don't move the slider like that. Make sure you actually click it and wait for a few seconds. Because what's happening is if I just drag it, it'll behave a bit weird because it's passing in more values and the parsing is not rereading it correctly. So just make sure you click and wait for a bit. And I'm doing here, just like click and wait for like two seconds. So yeah, I'm dragging it here. You see how it's like not responding too well. It's like it's behaving a bit weird. And it's also like spinning around. So yeah, just um, make sure you just always click and wait. As I'm doing here. So it worked really well for the servo. You see how it is responding to my angle changing. For my DC motor, I have almost the exact same code. So I'll just show it here. The only difference is my two methods for my slots, as you can see here. But everything else is the exact same. Same Arduino, same port, same everything. Same setup as before. And my method is vertical slider value change and then update DC motor with the exact same code as before. So it's like a pretty much a copy and paste. And let's see now how this works with my DC motor. So my motor is connected to pin number eight. So now if I run my Arduino script, it's not gonna respond because it's passing in zero and it's not available, but that's fine because wait till I get it to my GUI, it should respond now. So for me, the motor starts at 50. So if it's 11, it won't start. 52, it won't start because it has to be a bit over. So now look, 61 it'll begin so that's my speed over there 53 slow down a bit 70 will be pretty fast so yeah the, as you can see there 77 even faster 59 slowing back down for 49 it's tough because 50 is my minimum 55 it's a bit slower that's good so you see how it's responding to my slider now again here don't just like drag the slider make sure you click and wait so if i do this here it'll not it'll like go very fast and that's kind of weird because it's not reading that value it's actually reading a different number because i'm doing it too quickly so you just have to wait so yeah, yeah almost like broke my <laughs> setup there but luckily it's fine because my table is quite big so yeah that's it